So what we are trying to recreate here is basically a technology that was uncovered in the Be'er Sheva Valley. Basically, the copper smelting is taking the copper ore, which are green rocks, that in that particular instance have originated in the Araba. And what they are doing is they're taking those uh, silicates, it's actually sandstone, and they're transforming it from a very soft uh, rock to an actual metal. And the process is called smelting. And what's happening in this process is basically the reduction of the, malaca, of the, of the minerals that contain copper and the melting of the, every, of the matrix, of everything that is not the copper. And so you get sort of a separation. And the way they did it is by constructing very small, what we re refer to as proto-furnaces. It's small uh, ball-shaped holes dug in the ground, about 40 centimeters in diameter. And they are lining them with, uh, with uh, some sort of mortar, with, with clay or whatever. And then they fill them with charcoal. And the reason why they have to use charcoal and not wood is so the, the wood itself contains a lot of oxygen. And the idea is to create an atmosphere that doesn't have oxygen. And the charcoal can do exactly that. It's CO1. And once we're burning it, it wants to suck in uh, oxygen. And instead of sucking it from the atmosphere, we force it to suck the oxygen from the copper ore. And this creates the reduction. And this is why they need a closed furnace. This is why you cannot do it in open fire. And another thing you need to do is you need to reach a, a certain temperatures. It doesn't require necessarily a, a defined a temperature. It doesn't have to be a thousand degrees or 1100 degrees, but it needs to be around this realm for two reasons. One, in order for the chemical process to occur, and the other is for the melting of the excessive uh, materials. And so by creating a small shape, a small bowl shaped furnace, they are, um, they are concentrating the heat in one place. And so it's easier to reach higher temperatures and it's creating a reducing atmosphere. One of the problems in archaeometallurgy, in the, in the archaeology of, um, of metals, is that most of the materials, we cannot find them for numerous reasons. For once, we cannot find an intact furnace because the, furnace, the furnaces are for a single use because you have the, the, the copper uh, gets to the bottom of the furnace and then you have to destroy everything in order to reach the copper. So how can we tell anything about the, the structure of the furnace? We find very, very small pieces of, of the clay lining. Um, and with that, we have to reconstruct the entire process. And in theory, we know everything because uh, we know chemistry and, and also ethnographic examples. But there are so many variables in that process that don't necessarily go hand in hand with the pure theory, because there are a lot of things that can go wrong. So for one, for an instance, the most important thing or one of the most important things in, in the process is the quality of the ore, whether they use just any mined ore or they go through a beneficiation process where they only choose the best ore. And, and another variable is how they pump air into the furnace. So pumping air uh, is for, for extensive temperatures. And we don't really know how they did it. Uh, we can theorize that they used blow pipes or bellows or sack bellows we don't really know and also unless you actually make it yourself you cannot understand 
all of the variables and how they affect the process. And what we do is we conduct those experiments every year. And every year we learn something new. For an in so for an instance, we've learned that if your pipe system, if your piping system is what you use to inject air into the furnace, is not a two-piece uh, element, then it will affect your, uh, your bellows. It might disintegrate the bellows because the heat will not, uh, will not deplete over. So that is one thing. The other thing is the beneficiation process. We've found out that if we don't go through extensive beneficiation, we will for sure fail. And so it's things like that. It's to understand the process with all of its variables and to understand how each variable can affect the process and only, like, only this way we can understand the extent of the complexity of the process without actually touching it and doing it we cannot understand the full extent of the complexity of the process. Thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and sign up for our digital newsletter so that you can stay up to date on everything from the world of biblical archaeology. And if you would like to see more, why not check out one of the videos on your screen right now?